is mostly a 25 off six. Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Stewart Switzerland. We are at VMworld 2013. Joining us on the whiteboard is Serge Schatz. Serge is a fellow at Sandus. Serge, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You know, Serge, as I walk around VMworld this year, I'm starting to hear a lot about uh, write-back caching, and it's something that I think a lot of people are asking for. Uh, we even have a few vendors that are claimed to be delivering it, but I think there's some caveats that people need to be aware of when we start talking about write-back caching versus, say, read caching. But before we jump into that subject, let's give uh, the viewers a sort of a caching 101. What what are we talking about when we start talking about caching? Uh, we're talking about flash-based device, which is installed uh, on the server Okay, side. so what we have then is a, is a server. Yes. And then in that server, we're going to put either uh, an SSD here, or it could be a PCIe SSD, it can right? Be PCIe, whatever. And then uh, that server, of course, is attached to a shared storage device of some sort. And what's happening is we're offloading the uh, I.O. that would normally be transmitting, and it's a lot more of it's happening there now, correct? Absolutely correct. Okay, so and then in a read cache environment, obviously writes are go going directly uh, through here. Mm -hmm. Now they might go through the cache, uh, but reads are all happening here. So depending on your read-write mix, let's say it's 60 read, we could be taking 60% of the read tra traffic off of the network, right? Correct. Big gain. Uh, now, what we see in, I, I think, the, sort of the next big question everybody immediately asks is, oh, well, what about that 40% write? And so I think that's where write-back caching comes. But I think, the, as you and I have talked, boy, it's, it's uh, something that we need to be careful with. So let's kind of hit that first question there. Why is write-back caching so important? Yeah. So actually, you mentioned this already, about 40, 30, 40% of overall IOs are writes. Mm -hmm. And... You cannot predict for in, in advance, especially in a virtual environment, what's the ratio between reads and writes. In this moment, just one minute ago, it was more reads, and now it's more writes, mm -hmm. because it's a full mix, and it's very hard to predict. Right. So that's why having read cache in addition to write cache is very important. Both of them important. Right. And it's very hard to predict which one is more important in in, in any given point. Right, in and, I, and my assumption would be is that's because obviously this is, if this is a physical server, we have multiple virtual machines running here, and one could be very read heavy, you know, one could be a nice mix, and then one could be very write heavy, and we really have no way of predicting until exactly. the system starts running, right? And machine migrates, so it's very hard to predict what's sure. going on. Um, so. Uh, in addition to that, writes are very painful for primary storage. Okay. Uh, if it is RAID 5, it is very painful because for one write, it could be three actual IOs to RAID right. 5. Because you've got to calculate parity, write calculate parity. Calculate parity, read after that, and so on. You, every, it's, it's common sense. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so writes are very important for many other reasons. But as you mentioned, write acceleration is same important as read acceleration. Right. Now, there, I think the big concern that we're kind of talking about here is there's a risk associated with a write-back cache, right? Because if we do it without any intelligence at all, what would happen, right, is we send a write in and it gets caught in the cache, but we acknowledge to the application that we've got the write, everything's doing great, right? And then if, if we're unlucky and that something happens to that application or even the whole server, while that uh, write has not been successfully written to cache, we've got a big problem because the application thinks the data is there but it's not really there, right? And that's that's what the concern is, correct? This is a concern, okay. absolutely right. So right through <clears throat> uh, cache does not have this uh, problem because data is in a cache and always in right. a primary storage before write uh, should be, can be exposed. So we're in a 100% consistent state. Yes, and by the way, SSD can be down, server can be down, link can be down, whatever, and uh, we have to react accordingly. Right. So that's why Write back is fairly more complicated than write through and read only okay. caches. So, how do we make the write back caching efficient? Uh, first of all, how to make it safe. Okay. <laughs> and after this, we'll talk how to make it efficient. Okay. How to make it safe? Uh, we have to have second copy. And do we want it or not? Uh, we when we intercept uh, when caching software intercept write on one host, it should replicate it on another host, maybe one, maybe two. Uh, 
um, if this, this host also has SSD installed, and only when data on this SSD, or at least in the memory on this host, in this case, we acknowledge right. So data is here, second copy is here, and only after that we acknowledge. Right. So that way we get out of the, 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 the data is out of the box, if you will, and yes. somewhere protected. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Unfortunately, there's not only problem here. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is for, let's say, for high availability. If mm -hmm. the server, let's say, or SSD is down, we have second copy here. But uh, specifically for virtualization, um, if we have N node cluster and for whatever reason virtual machine migrates from one host to another host, not to this host, to another host that doesn't have this data in the cache. There is a problem how to access this data from here or from here. Mm -hmm. And it's additional protocol um, on the top of just a protocol of synchronization of Right, you have to manage the migration and things exactly. like that. Okay. Exactly, exactly. And make sure that if we have another host and virtual machine from here migrates from here to here, this virtual machine, number one, must be started immediately, and number two, obviously, has access to this data that is not flushed yet on a primary storage. So basically, it is, speaking about difficulties of uh, write-back cache, it is a high availability and supporting of uh, machine migration. So what are you guys uh, looking to do to try to make that work? Uh, as I mentioned, we replicate. Okay. Uh, data and we have at least second copy of this and this is common pretty much technique as well we, as I mentioned we have special protocol that allows to start virtual machine immediately mm -hmm. and still have access to this data okay and now we can talk about efficiency okay let's talk back. about efficiency uh, first of all <clears throat> let's ask a question why what why write back what's most important about write back and actually, there is a three reasons. Okay. Reason number one, fast acknowledge. When you write, you write on the cache and immediately acknowledge. Sure. Second reason is write coalescing. When you flush data, because sooner or later we have to write from the cache to the primary storage. When you write on the primary storage, we can coalesce data. And third reason is write cancellation. <clears throat> what, do, what do we mean by that, write cancellation? We mean that if dirty data, not flush data, still in the cache, and this data is overwritten second time, third time, fourth time, because it's a hot spot for writes, we actually flush only latest copy of this data. Okay. It so that means, that means less overall I.O. to the storage exactly. system. Exactly. So less number of I.O.s because of callers, because we, instead of many random, we write less large mm -hmm. and less data just to write on the primary storage, uh, which is important. And this, too, is absolutely important for performance. Okay. So we're already uh, two years, we're shipping uh, right back cache for bare metal system, Windows and Linux, and we have information from our enterprise customers. For example, we can start 25 times less IOs and seven times less data written on a primary storage because of that. It means that we must have the more dirty data and flush data we keep, the better. Okay. And that's reason number one. Reason number two, uh, why write back can be, I would say, requirements for write back. Mm -hmm. Low latency access to SSD. If SSD can handle uh, read or writes for tens of microseconds, I don't want to, sp to spend in the software 100 microseconds. Sure. As less network traffic as possible. Uh, we replicate already between hosts, and this is a network traffic, but when the motion happened, we, we, we can, but we don't want to use network for uh, replication because software stack and TCP IP is very heavy. Okay. VMDK level of acceleration, it's very important for snapshot support for VDI. And finally, it is very important to support NFS, 
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for entire, for entire, purple. yes. So SAN and NAS must be supported, and this is also something special for right back. Okay. Well, sir, thanks very much. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.